Lesson 14. Lesson 14 covers the blend command, which is an old style command that's still available. It doesn't have the same interface as the traditional ones that you see for extrude or revolve or sweep. The component that we're going to create, I'm going to open it here, drawing. I'm going to do a drawing and the model. And it's actually a fairly simple part. In the very beginning, give the dimensions and you're going to create the first protrusion, which is nothing more than a circle that's extruded. So if we go back to the very beginning of this one and we edit the definition of it, you will see that it is just a simple circle, nine inches in diameter, or whatever it is. I might have changed this for the ECO at the end. Probably not, but whatever it says in the book as far as the sizes go by the sizes. Let's see what it says here. So. <clears throat> Once you've created the very first one, yes, it's nine inches. I think I removed the ECO. It used to be in a former version of the book. So we have nine inches here, and your extrude. And then you're going to go directly into the blend command. Now, the blend command, if you click on shapes in the ribbon, the model tab, you'll see blend is available. When you click on it, you'll see that there's actually five different versions of it. So you're not going to get the traditional interface. For instance, here's with Revolve. When you click on this one, and I think what I'm going to do is I will suppress this and we'll go back to it. But when you create the blend, you're going to have to choose one of these. You can't go back and forth between them with the, um, with the dashboard. So here if we click on Protrusion, we're actually going to get the old menu manager back up. That's why they still have this portion of the screen available to you on the side. Don't make your, your uh, PTC window fill the whole screen. Always leave the two inches on the side here. So you're going to pick your options for the blend. Done. It's going to be smooth or straight. We'll see the difference between that. Done. And select where you're going to create it from. And you'll see you have an arrow. You cannot flip this arrow by clicking on it. You have to click over here. But it's really OK as it is. And the default will orient your, your sketch. Again, this is very different than previous. Now, <clears throat> when it gets into the sketcher itself, it does have the ribbon and all the information available like traditional Creo parametric. And you're going to go into your sketch view. Now, over here on the far left, <clears throat> we have the setup. We have a grid. And when you click on that, you'll see that you have the option of going to polar static. And we're going to have 0.5 for the size of the polar grid. And the angular spacing is here. Click OK. And you need to also turn on the grid. So display, display grid. And if you want to find where those commands are, you can click on the locator here. Well, let's just type in grid, see what we get. And you'll see it will take you directly to those locations, those different places. I'm going to close that. And you're basically going to sketch so that you have one, th one third, one third, one third, in other words. Uh, to split it into three pieces. There's one rule when we have blends. Blend must blend from one section to another to another, and they must be uh, the same amount of segments unless you're going to go to a single point. <clears throat> so if we put on no hidden, you'll see the, the grid here. And basically, we are just doing center and ends. And when you create this, oh, I didn't put grid snap on. So let's go over to File, Options, and under Sketcher, make sure you turn on your grid snap. And here you can show the grid here also. So again, go back, click on the R command. And again, this, this is the starting point where I'm picking here. And I'm going to do this three times. 
like so. You can see the arrow there. Now under sketch setup over here you can actually take a look at some of the options that are here. Feature tools, you can toggle the section. That's the same thing as right mouse button. Toggle section. And now it gets grayed out. Now you're on a completely different section at this point. So in this case here I'll make it a triangle but the same amount of segments. And again the starting point is here. If you want to change your starting point you can always click on on the end point of one of the entities. Right mouse button and starting point. If you want to change its direction you do the exact same thing. Of course we want to be back here where we started from. Now in the book they only have you do two. Um, I think uh, we'll do three of them and then we'll go back to the, the other We'll resume the other features. So, right mouse button toggle section, and let's uh, let's put another arc in there, and click on the beginning and the end, and do it three times. So all of these start points are aligned. And I'm going to control D, put it into pictorial. See, they're all on the same plane. So it looks a little odd at first. Right mouse button, OK. Click check. And we're going to use blind, the distance in between. And uh, let's, make it, uh, let's make it three inches and then uh, two inches between the first section, second section, third section. And preview it. Let's go over and click on shading with edges and you'll see kind of funny shape. Now if you want to make that smooth, so we go to our attributes and we define that and we change it to smooth. And you'll see it looks a little bit better at that point. Okay, so start point and the fact that we have the same amount of entities in each section. Those are the two important things. I'm going to cancel this one because I'm going to go resume the one that I suppressed over here. This is the one that you're going to be doing. You can experiment with this. You don't have to use the exact same version that I gave you. You could actually make it, you know, two, three, four, five sections. That's okay. All right. So we're going to go and move this up so that the insert here is see if I can get it to work. No, it won't work for some reason. That's funny. So we're going to go to the shell command next. And I think what I'm going to do is I'll suppress my holes. And the shell command, basically all you're doing is removing the same amount of material. So it's a consistent thickness. And, you know, while I'm at it, my cursor is acting kind of funny. I'm not sure why, but I don't like to leave my grid or snapped grid on. Let's see if that's a little bit better. That seems a little bit better. I'm not certain. All right, so we're just removing the bottom portion of this. Now, it depends on when you do it. So, for instance, when we have this hole here, and let's resume it. If your shell was before this, you'll see how it looks with a little bit of a lip there. So in the book they have you actually put in the uh, shell at the very end and it looks like this. But something happened between the two versions of Creo that they released and if you look at the very bottom here of the book, or the bottom of the, uh, of the chapter, you'll see that there's kind of an odd surface skin over the top right here. And that was a bug. And so when they, when we reloaded the software, unfortunately, I mentioned this before, they actually changed some of the commands. Um, but they also fixed the fact that this skin was showing up in certain circumstances. So in the book, I didn't have you leave it. Previously, in other books, I had this little lip 
so that you have a little boss in there. In this particular case, we're not going to do it that way. So it'll work either way. When you have your pattern, I'm going to pull it down. You can see that it doesn't form the lip because the pattern comes afterwards. Now, the pattern is a simple matter of just putting in a hole. So let's edit definition of that hole, and you'll see. And I'll turn the model. So we've got a couple of references here. First of all, it's a diameter we're putting in, and we also have four for the, di for the diameter of the hole, 0.4. But we have 30 degrees, and we have the axis as a reference. So when you look at the placement, you'll see we have the surface that it's on, and we have the axis and the angle. But the most important thing here is the type, which is a diameter. So we'll put that one in again, just another hole. So click on the hole tool. I'll, I'll put it on the other side here. It's a little big, and we can leave it. So basically, we want to look at the placement first. And you'll see that the placement plane is selected the surface but we want to have this as a diameter and when we do that then we want to click here for secondary or the offset references you can see right mouse button will get you that also and we're going to select the axes and then hold down your control key and we are going to pick on the one of the angle to create an angle so one of the datum planes and there's my angle and I could actually take this and just drag it around you can see what would happen so it's fairly simple process that we're doing here. And we'll come out of that one. Now next, I'm going to resume this. And let's take a look at it again. So basically, that's it. It's a fairly simple part. One of the requirements of this exercise, though, is that you also do a drawing. So you're just going to generate a traditional drawing. And one of the things we didn't put in the book, but you might want to add as a detail. Now, we did cut a section through this part. And if you haven't done that, you can go back and make sure that there is a section. And we'll go to View, Manage Views an X section, and you'll see we did create a section through here. So you can create a section on your own if you haven't done that uh, with the steps in the book so that it's available when you do get to the drawing. You can create a section in the drawing also, but it always gets embedded in the model, so it's easier and I think better to always put it in the model, just easier to do. So what we want to do is maybe add an extra view here just to have a little bit of value to it. So in our layout tab, we have the detailed, so it's going to be a detailed view. And let's click close to where the hole is here on the top, and then just create a spline around. You don't have to close the spline, just click on your middle mouse button. And it's going to prompt you down in the corner for the center point of the drawing view. So I'm going to put it over here. So, right mouse button, lock view mover, turn that off, and we can move this around. The view movement is locked, then obviously you can't move it. And if we want to, click once on the note and then double click on the scale, and you can make that scale larger. So let's go to one and a half. So it really doesn't give us much information there unless we do a few other things. And one of them is let's turn this view into a section. Let's double click on this one first and see what we have available. See the sections are grayed out because we're taking it from its parent. So double click on the first view, or I should say the right side view. Sections, 2D plus, click on the A, apply. And you can see in both cases they show the section close. This one's fairly close together if we double click on that. And again, the old menu manager is coming up. So it's spacing. Maybe you want to change spacing. Maybe you want to change the angle of the spacing.
and then go up to the view here. And you can actually change the spacing on this one too if you want. Double click on it. And from parent, you can make it dependent, independent. And let's just double it. So maybe it's a little too big, but you can fix it. And remember, you're going to have to add your center lines here, your axes, I should say. Uh, click on View, Annotation, Show Model. You can see you got a couple of uh, axes in there, a couple of dimensions too, depending on what you want. I don't think we'll put dimensions. Got one axes. Click OK. And if there's any dimension that you want to move over to this view, you can obviously do that also. So I think that's it for this particular lesson. It's fairly short, but it'll take you a little bit of time to generate the drawing. And this concludes lesson 14.